It's the latest in communication, entertainment, and exhilaration. The Acura MDX. Acura. Advance. Hej og velkommen til vores vidunderlige lille tegnestue her i det indre København. Mit navn er Louise Campbell. And to translate so that more than five million people on the planet have a chance of understanding what I just said, welcome to our small studio in the centre of Copenhagen. My name is Louise Campbell. We I'm going to start you off at Royal Copenhagen before the place is filled up with customers. Then I'm going to take you to Louis Poulton's headquarters and finally the Ministry of Culture, which is a rather more accessible place than the word indicates. Copenhagen, with whom my studio has been working for the past three years very, very closely, on making a completely new set of tableware. Royal Copenhagen is one of the elephants of uh, Danish production. It's a purveyor to Her Majesty the Queen of Denmark, and it's a, an extremely tradition-bound company that's been in existence for a couple of hundred years. It's having great troubles moving out of the traditions. Every time they try to do something radically new, no one wants to buy it. So I was asked to design something that was 100% recognizably Royal Copenhagen, yet renewing the company's identity. Respect for tradition and yet renewal was insisting on working with new colors. Royal Copenhagen is known for being blue. What I thought was, okay, I am being very gentle and extremely respectful in the design of all the shapes here. So where do we go completely wild by developing new colors for Royal Copenhagen? No two colors are the same. When you buy a new piece or when I design a new piece, we develop a brand new color for that piece. This color is amazing. Yeah. So every single piece is decorated differently and every single piece will have a bare area where our form is in focus. And what we're very interested in is the tiny little details. The closer you get to each piece of porcelain, the more interesting little details and the more wicked little twists you will find. First and foremost, although I'm trying to please the Japanese, the British, the Danes and the Americans, I also want to please me. I want to make sure that this is something I want. I think that's the best, most personal way to work. And actually we've achieved a result where I'm happy to say that I'm really enjoying dining on the prototypes at home. The name Louis Poulton is the identity of the company, but the actual uh, lighting identity has come from a man, a, a genius, called Paul Henningsen, who uh, developed his entirely own lighting philosophy, the first time anyone's ever really done it. And this philosophy is still the stepping stone of any new products that Louis Poulton developed today, and has made it a real challenge for me to come in as a young designer, I was eight years ago, and, uh, and develop completely new, up-to-date lamps for Louis Poulton, but yet in Paul Henningsen's spirit. Come inside. It's eight years ago I first started working with Louis Poulton. They asked me to come and work with them. It's the first company that took me really seriously as a, as a potentially commercial designer. I want cosy light, I want comforting light, and I've really worked hard on finding the comforting light. And my the source of inspiration has been something extremely banal, but very important, and something I can work with for a long time, the sunlight. Collage lamp is the, is the clearest uh, example of how I'm working with Louis Poulton and how my inspiration comes directly from how the sunlight travels through several layers of, for example, leaves and branches on trees in the forests. 
There is no place in the world where I feel more comfortable than in the woods on a sunny day. I love that feeling and I want to take that and put it into people's homes and the collage lamp is my proposal for doing so. In our commercial work at the studio, it's important to respect and collaborate uh, with, a, with a big listening ear to what our clients actually want from us. And at the same time, my drive, my motivation is to see how far I can push them. Gently, uh, but a, a, a small step uh, each time is important for me to have taken. This studio is a really unusual place. It's in a very quiet backyard, but slam in the centre of Copenhagen. And it's full of creative people. One of them cooks for us at the studio, the other one makes coffee for us. The blacksmith downstairs also breeds rabbits and he allows them to run freely in the yard. But people who visit us will notice that at the front at the, of the stairs, at the bottom of the stairs, is a little sign, a picture of a rabbit and a sign across it. Rabbits are not allowed upstairs and they're very bright, our rabbits, they get it. Since the sign came up, they haven't visited us once. It's wonderful to be in an, in an environment where everybody understands each other. We're heading towards the Ministry of Culture, where I, a couple of years ago, designed the minister himself front office for his seven most important staff. A couple of years ago, the Minister of Culture contacted my studio and asked if we'd be interested in a very quick job uh, to completely redesign his front office which is an office with many functions. It's also the passage anybody visiting the minister who's at the end of this door pass through. And it's okay if your pulse rises as you get closer to the door. These two people sitting in here, their main role is to be cool, calm and collected. So we've chosen this ice cream and specially designed the frames, the curtains, the furniture, even hand dyed the textiles that cover the eames chairs that we've chosen because they're so wonderfully beautiful and comfortable. What might be difficult to capture on film is that this room is in a listed building and by the way we weren't allowed to touch the room itself and didn't want to because it's incredibly beautiful with its 16 windows but the walls are at a slant and in order to get this puzzle to fit we've actually designed the frames and even the desks at exactly that same slant so they are tailor-made for this room. Each table is has got the same odd angle as the room itself. I think slightly sarcastically at some time, one of the secretaries at the time said, we could do with a punching ball, could you get us a punching ball? And we did, we took it seriously. So this is for the secretaries, it's for the minister if he feels like it, and it's for any guests who may need to use this before or after visiting this office. Although we like to think of ourselves at the studio as free and expressive and anarchistic, the truth is we have some very firm rules to abide by. We set them ourselves and we respect them ourselves. Let's see. Always start from scratch. Be sure there's a good reason for every decision made. And finally, and most importantly, dare to be different. Wait.